GLG, appreciate y'all being in the building, man. Look, if you want to be a part of this live chat, man, go to the main channel page, King Ray Ray Show. Next to the subscribe button, you'll see a join button. Click that join button. Go into the kiosk. It Follow the prompts. Become a member. Come on, slide back in, and you'll be able to chop it up with us, man. You know you want to do it. Go ahead and do it. If you can't do it right now, I appreciate you listening to the show anyway. SJ3, my good brother, in the building. Always represent, man. Always represent. The Money Boys, what's good, man? What's good? Gone go. I see you, bro. I see you. Hey, Bill, what's good, bro? What's good? Swart, I see you in here, man. Jody and Carl, what up, man? AJ Shock, I see you, man. What's good? Ira Immortal, what up, man? T Money Five, what up? Firebird in the morning sky. Salute, man. Boy, that is one dope name right there, man. I like that name, man. Spiritual OZ, I see you in here, man. Mello, what up, man? The FX, what up? I see you in the building, man. I see you in here. BOA fan girl, appreciate you supporting the show as always. Appreciate the 928. I don't know how that God got to that amount there, but appreciate you supporting the show. Appreciate you being a member of the GLG. Let's get ready to slide in here, man. A Bell, man, represent, man. Let's get ready to do this, man. All right, man. From time to time, I like to take different angles on things. And if you're anything like me, then you know plenty of guys who have spent a little time you know, in prison for whatever various crimes they may have committed. And maybe you spent a little time in jail or prison yourself. But I always thought about how some guys, now not all guys, some guys seem to not age after 10 years, while guys outside have aged 20 years in 10 years. And so I say, what is it about that separation? Because, you know, over here in the kingdom, we believe that separation leads to elevation. There is no elevation without separation. So I say, what is it about that type of separation, that level of separation? Because we're talking about the utmost form of separation, a forced separation that you cannot control the length of. There is no greater separation than that where you are put into an entirely different environment with an entirely different set of rules and regulations. So I did some thinking and I said, what can we take from that separation and match it with some of the things that we already say to further prove that what we stand on in the kingdom is the reality of life and it will affect your life in the same way. So let's get into this thing, man. Today we will be talking about the spiritual benefits of separating yourself like a prisoner. The spiritual benefits of the prison mindset. Now, of course, there are some things about the environment that we ain't talking about. We ain't talking about men doing this and doing that to men. We ain't talking about that. We're talking about the benefits that a man gets because many men come out and they never go back. Many men come out with a new outlook on life. They're better men when they come out physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And it's not because prison is a great place to be, but it's because that separation forces you to do some things. That is why I implore you to force yourself into a separation if you aren't where you need to be. Spiritual Alpha, Spiritual Alpha, what's good, brother? Adrian Rodriguez, I see you in the building. So let's get into this thing, man. Now, the first thing is this, you know, I tell you men all the time, you need a separate space that is void of feminine energy. You need a separate space that's only your energy, that your energy permeates, like you need that space that you can continue to develop and grow as a man spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, and even financially, because a much cheaper life. So the heightened levels of testosterone is what you get in that environment. Now, here's the thing. In this environment, when you have your woman come around, she brings feminine energy. In that environment, even the woman has to come in with a fair share of masculine energy, or even she has to purport that she has that energy. She has to play the role. She has to have that image. And so even with the females in that environment, they have to have higher testosterone because you got, I think you got to have a higher level of testosterone to even want to be a woman who works in that environment. Or 
you know, you could be something else. But for the most part, to really love that environment and want to be in it and want to grow in it and want to get promotions and become, you know, and start wearing a white shirt and be, be an officer and all of those things go from just being a, you know, regular CO to being, you know, a lieutenant or a captain or something like that, man, you have to want, you have to be that type because the entire environment demands that. And when you have that environment at home, you need to keep that environment as clean as you possibly can and and as as testosterone based as you possibly can and that's how you get the benefit from doing that that's how you get the benefit heightened levels of testosterone that are unmatched in the human world i mean absolutely unmatched the type of the type of testosterone you see with bull elephants in on the african savannah or or in botswana or you know in one of these areas where you see huge herds of elephants the bull elephants especially when there's that time when it's mating time when man this and the bull elephants when you see when you see their ears like you see liquid coming out of the ears that's liquid testosterone pouring out of their ears which means they will ram a truck they will turn a truck over they knock down trees they do all types of things because strength and power is that environment and if you notice with elephants the bull elephants don't travel with the herd they kind of off doing their own thing now, when things get dry and they got to go find water, yes, they follow the matriarch, but they don't follow with the herd. They're kind of off to themselves, doing their own thing. They're, they're, they're away from the, from the herd. The second thing is you have no stresses and drama from worrying about everyday issues of the free world. You don't worry about bills. You don't, I mean, you don't worry about getting no call from no bill collector. You don't worry about, you know, trying to, you know, you don't worry about saving. You don't, you can't, you don't worry about investments. You don't have to look at your investment account. You don't, you don't have to worry about identity theft. You don't have to worry about any of the things. You don't have to worry about getting pulled over by the police. You don't have to worry about anything, man. You don't have to worry about, you know, it's time to renew your tag. You don't have to worry about anything. Technically speaking, while you in there, man, you ain't even have to worry about child support payments. Now you're going to have to, you're going to be on the hook when you come out. But while you in there, you ain't even got to worry about it, man. There are so many things you don't have to worry about. The only thing you have to worry about is how you carry yourself in that environment and navigating that environment. But after a while of being there, it becomes second nature. You just become a part of the environment. So initially, you got to figure out how to acclimate to the environment. But after a while, you're just a part of it. There's other guys that got to come in and figure out how to acclimate to the environment. You figure your routine and you just don't have the worries of outside. You don't have to worry about how you're going to eat. Yes, the food is not going to be the best quality food, but you know at least it's coming to you and you get used to navigating how you're gonna eat in there you may have to worry about getting some money but money for what commissary you'll never have to spend i tell you what you ain't gonna need card note money every month for commissary i can tell you that Before you know it, I mean, you're moving around, you're a trustee, you get a little bit, you start to get a little bit of freedom, you start to actually be able to interact with people. Man, listen, I'm telling you, I'm not telling you this is a life for you to aspire to now. I'm not telling you to do something to go to prison. That's not what I'm telling you. I'm telling you there's benefits to the separation that those guys get. And even those guys who become trustees, they lose a little bit of their edge because now they're interacting with more feminine energy all of the time. They're, they're overworking in an office somewhere now still on the grounds but they're over cleaning up an office now so they're dealing with civilian people now you know what i mean so the stresses and drama from worrying about the free world man it it makes people out here go to drinking go to using other substances go to giving up on life go to taking themselves out of life go to just you know turning on everyone going to to stressing themselves out man it leads people to a lot so without that level of stress you're not going to age quickly if you're not stressing Stress is the thing that ages you the most. I'm just going to be honest with you. Nothing ages you more than stress. Uncommon. Appreciate you, bro. John, appreciate you coming on through, man. GLG representative. Underground Gold. Appreciate you, super sticker. Now, the third thing is this. No feminine energy and the issues it causes between men. So, you're not going to have a beef over your woman or his woman or any woman. There is no beef. You're not going, you don't have to deal with the nagging and complaining of your wife. 
because the number one thing they tell you is to block out all the outside noise. So you can do that in your home. You can be home. You can build an environment. You can build a cocoon where you block out all of the outside noise. You can't worry about what's going on outside. Like, I don't worry about what's going on outside of my life and the things that I need to do and the people that I need to interact with and the people that I need to take care of. I don't worry about what's going on outside of that. So don't tell me what's going on on the Gaza Strip. Don't tell me what's going on in South Africa. Don't tell me what's going on on the other side of the country don't tell me what's going on in istanbul turkey don't tell because i don't care what's going on i have cocooned myself and walled myself off from concerns about things that don't pertain to my life if it's not content i ain't worrying about it just keep it a book with you i can't you can't worry about what's going on in the outside man it's kind of like if you're in a civilized environment, you can't worry about what's going on in an uncivilized environment. If you're in an uncivilized environment, you can't worry about what's going on in a civilized environment. The only environment you can navigate every day is your own. Also, you don't spend a lot of time browsing social media, getting, getting emotionally caught up in what other people got going on, getting emotionally caught up in situations and circumstances and discussions that have nothing to do with you. Somebody posts something, you getting your feelings about it before you know it, you're going back and forth with someone in the comments. Only time you're going to see me in the comments is on my own post. Because I do believe in interacting with people that take their time out to engage with my post. Some people, I ain't going to interact with everybody, I ain't going to tell you that. Too many people right now. I used to be able to do that, but not now. So I want y'all to understand that these things are, are, are readily available in the free world. You, listen, you don't even have to do nothing to get nagged by your woman in the free world. You don't even have to do nothing. You could be chilling. You could be, you can be, the, you can be the model husband. You could be the ideal husband, the ideal man, and you still may get nagged. And I'm going to be honest with you. Nothing stresses a man like being nagged about some foolishness. Nothing does. That's why you got to make sure that if you got a woman around you, she understands. She thinks that you're the, that, that you're the bee's knees. She thinks, man, that, listen, boy, that, that you are the best thing since sliced bread. I'm talking about she couldn't make a sandwich before you were born. That's how she has to view you. If you have anything other than that, you're going to bring in a level of stress in your life that's going to keep you from focusing on the things you need to focus on. Because here's the thing. The higher the stress is in your life, the more you're going to focus on doing away with that stress. So you're going to do what you have to do to quiet that woman. You're going to do what you have to do to make that woman be quiet, to make that woman satisfied enough where she can stop nagging you, where she can get out of your ear. So if you have a woman with you that's nagging you, then you need to get rid of her and move away from her so you can focus on the things you need to focus on. Because focusing on the things you need to focus on is how you get peace of mind. If you got, if you got 24 hours in a day and you got to spend 16 of those hours doing something you hate, by the time you sleep your life is miserable if you got sick if you got 24 hours in a day and you only spending two of those hours doing something you don't want to do and you got the whole rest of the day to do the things you love and sleep and get proper rest and eat the right food and all of that the more the more structure you have in your life based on forgetting the outside world the more you're able to navigate the inside world you got to treat your life like you're stuck in it you understand like you got to treat your life like you're stuck in it you have time, man, listen, you're doing time in your life and you will never be able to escape it. You got life. You got life in your life. That's how I want you to start viewing it. You have life in your life. I have a life sentence to my life. So I might as well stop worrying about trying to make it something else, trying to worry about making my life somebody else's life. This is my life. You see guys all the time, man, man, guys get 10 years, 20 years. They tell, tell their woman, don't ever bring my kids down here to see me. I'll send them pictures. I'll send them letters. I do. But don't ever bring them here to see me. I don't never want them to see me in here like this. And that's how you have to view your life. You have to view your life that way. The prison mindset is what goes on in here is my life. I can't worry about what's going on in the free world. And that's the mindset that we have to embrace because it is a stress-free, man, listen, it will eliminate your stress so much to stop worrying about things you can't control. See, if you're in prison, you can't control what your wife doing outside. You can't control who she's dealing with. You can't control who she got your kids around. You can't control none of that. So out here in real life, 
you have to embody those things. Now, it's a lot easier in that environment because there's literally nothing you can do. You can't go by and do a check, but you have to be the type of man who ain't going to go by and do a check. You have to be the type of man who's not going to be concerned about it. You have to be the type of man who's going to be able to focus on the things you need to focus on and not get sidetracked by the things you can't control. See, it doesn't matter what you want in life. It matters what you can control. So if you want to be rich, it doesn't matter. All you control is doing these set of actions that may get you there. You can't control being rich. You can't control if you're going to get rich. You can control if you do the things that will make you rich, that could possibly make you rich. That's how we have to view life. You have to control what you can control and not worry about other things. That's the number one prison mindset. I can't worry about what go on outside. I'm in here. This is my life. You understand? This is my life. So I don't care what other people do. You know, you see me. You know, hey, listen, you see me with a woman that's worthy, you're going to see me with a woman on my arm, and she's probably going to have a ring on her finger. I ain't going to tell you we're going to have no legal paperwork, but if you see, if she's worthy, you're going to see it with me, boy, she's going to have a ring on that finger, boy. I'm trying to tell you. Why? Because I worry about what's going on in my life and what works in my life. You dig? That's what I worry about. Number four, they have a set routine in there that eliminates the need to stress about the nuances of any, you know, of any ever-changing landscape you know here out here there's an ever-changing landscape in there man you're stuck in a time warp because you don't let societal pressures and societal norms dictate what you do you're in an environment that stays the same you have to try to create your life in a way where your overall environment stays the same now, i don't mean if you're living in a bad place you stay there i mean your internal environment the environment that you that you have to function in every day in order to do the things you want to do. You have to make that environment kind of like a prison like that, you know. And then a set routine also eliminates wasting time. It eliminates wasting time. So a set routine eliminates so much thought. Like you don't have to worry about, listen, you don't have to worry about a month from now, you ain't worked out in a month. If you set on your schedule, you go into a gym at six o'clock in the morning. If you're in that gym at 6 o'clock in the morning, you ain't got to worry about missing the gym because you, you know what you, you got a set routine at 6 o'clock in the morning, you in the gym. It don't matter what else happened on the outside. It don't matter what happened. It don't matter what somebody else want. It don't matter, it don't matter what woman want to come spend the night at your house. It don't matter none of that. You in the gym at 6 o'clock in the morning. That's just where you're going to be. At 6 o'clock, you're going to be in the gym. Whether it's the gym, you got to get up and leave the house or you go to your home gym, whatever you're going to do. If you can work out at home, work out at home, but it don't matter. You're going to be working out at 6 o'clock. Don't even worry about being at the gym. Don't even say, I'm going to the gym at 6 o'clock. Say, I'm working out. Because here's the thing. Those guys can't get up and go to the gym. Their routine for working out is called, I'm going to work out right here. This is workout time of day. That's what I'm going to do. You understand? This is the time I'm going to work out. This is the time I'm going to eat. This is the time I'm going to read. This is the time I'm going to pray. This is the time I'm going to bed. The main thing is to have a set time for bed every single night. If you don't have a set time for bed every night, you don't have a routine. You can't establish a routine. Your routine starts with rest. It don't start with, with being busy. Your routine starts with rest. See, here's the thing. Those doors are going, those doors are going to lock at a certain time at night. Those doors going to click open at a certain time in the morning. Every single time, every single day. And the most productive men out here in this, in, in the free world, the most productive men have a set schedule of sleep and waking. That's the number one thing that you need to set in your life, a set time of sleeping and waking. And we start off our lives with that. As newborn babies, we have a set schedule where we sleep and where we wake up. People try to change it and then they have to change it, especially if it's in reverse. It was sleeping during the day and up at night. People change it because they have to be asleep at night because they have to be up in the morning. But not really. If you have a wife and she has a child and you allow her to stay at home and be a mother for those first few years like she's supposed to be, then she can be up with the baby and sleep with the baby. The baby keeps the same mindset where well, the baby has a routine. Well, people change our routine. And now you get to a certain point where now you got to live by an alarm clock. Let me tell y'all something, man. If you go to sleep early enough, you don't have to live by an alarm clock. If you got to be up at six, well, you need to be in the bed at nine. You can't, if you need to be up at six, you can't go to bed at one, big dog. You're going to need an alarm to wake you up. And I'm going to be honest with you. You're doing your body a disservice. If you got to wake up every morning to an alarm clock, boy, you're doing your body a great disservice. Well, I can't get up without alarm. Yes, you can if you go to sleep. Well, I got to watch TV. No, you don't watch TV on the weekends. Get in the bed. 
Get some rest, man. The number five thing, number five benefit of a prison mindset is, again, none of that social media nonsense. Yes, you, those guys can get on social media sometime, but they can't spend all of their time on social media. They can't spend unnecessary time browsing the Internet, sitting in front of the TV, watching. I mean, they can't do it, bro. They can't do it. It's not going to be done. Because there's one TV on a block. Everybody got to watch that TV. Now, if you get to the point, I mean, maybe if you're in the field, you have your own TV, but we're, we're not talking about that. We're talking about basic state prison life where guys have a routine and they stick to it. And even when they're on social media, they, you know, they can't just be, you know, out in the dorm in social media. They can't be out in the block on social media. They have to do it secretly. They have to be secretive about it. And they have to be out of the way because phones are contraband. They're not supposed to have them. So your phone can't even dictate your life. Like, think about right now. Think about right now. I'm over here right now, man. My phones are not even out in front of me. Because even though I'm doing the show, if my phone was right here and it went off and I saw an alert on it, just automatically, subconsciously, I cut my eyes over there at it. I don't need to be worrying about my phone right now. I'm at work. I'm busy. I'm doing my show. You know, I'm doing the King Ray Ray podcast, man. This is a phenomenal podcast. So listen, man. Uh, segue from that, man. I want y'all to help me come up with a name for the show. The King Ray Ray Show, that's the channel. Um, I mean, if King Ray Ray Show is good for y'all, cool. We'll keep it the King Ray Ray Show. But that's just what I started the channel. I really started this channel to make fun of people who always talk about Pookie and Ray Ray because they don't know the difference between Pookie and Ray Ray. They think Pookie and Ray Ray are the same thing. Pookie and Ray Ray are not the same thing. Women don't fall for Pookie. Pookie is from the New Jack City role that Chris Rock paid. Pookie was an addict. Ray Ray is from the movie South Central, where OG Bobby Johnson's partner that he did time for was Ray Ray. Ray Ray was the leader of a gang. He got plenty of money. So yes, Ray Ray, she will fall for Ray Ray, but she won't fall for Pookie. So I decided that I was just going to do, you know, King Ray Ray. You understand? So I see Uncommon says this. I'll tell you what you do, Uncommon. Uncommon says, you're on point with that consistent schedule topic. I only lack sleep and do the 12-hour graveyard shifts. They throw me off. Let me tell you what you do, man. Get you some tea. Just research sleepy time teas. I got a couple over there. I, I, I'll show them to you. I got a horchata. Um, I can't remember what it is. A, a, a horchata vanilla. I have a horchata vanilla tea. Sleepy time tea. Got those sleepy time herbs in it. And I also have a... Um, a uh, a caramel desire sleepy time tea man listen those sleepy time teas put your one bag of each in a cup pour the water in it let that boy steep for a good 10 minutes you know let, let it just sit in there for five minutes and the other five minutes you let that boy steep for five minutes you need all that tea in there man listen you put that tea down in you bruh you're gonna be out you understand what i'm saying so get you some sleepy time tea uh, to help you sleep during the daytime man uh also if you don't have blackout curtains on you want to get you some blackout curtains uh, get you some earplugs, you know, plug your ears so you can't hear the daytime noises when you need to come home and be sleep. Also, um, if you can't find, if the blackout shades don't do it for your room and you don't make it black enough, then, uh, man, get you some, what you call it, get you some blackout covers for your eyes, man. You know, we think women use those things, man, so they can go to sleep, but they make them for you too. You can just get a blindfold, just get your regular blind, just sleep in it, man. You know, they make them for us too. That they're, It's a universal thing. You ain't got to get them with flowers on it up, uh, uh, cheetah print or nothing like that but man get some of those things so you can create your daytime so you can create your nighttime in the daytime that'll put you man that that'll get you where you need to be it'll help you understand what i'm saying it'll help an awful lot because i'm an insomniac you understand if i don't a lot of times man listen there are times man where i stay for 24 hours 36 hours you know what i'm saying i'm just an insomniac my mind moves at a at a at a, at a, at a million miles a minute so you know i i have to i use those t's you know what I'm saying? I use those teas. You know, I used to, I don't, um, I don't, uh, I, you know, I don't do things like uh, melatonin and all that, man. Nah, that's cool, but I prefer not to do that, man. I just use the tea. So try that out, bro. Try that out. 
Hey, yeah, that tea, man. Listen, man, tea is top notch, man. Like, I got a, I got a cabinet full of teas right now, man. I'm a tea expert. I'm a tea OG. You know what, man? Maybe I'll start showing y'all some of my teas, man. On, uh, on, uh, when I start, when I start dropping these, um, these uh, cooking videos on the Patreon, man. I, uh, I show y'all some of my teas, man. I show y'all how to, how to live a super laid back bachelor life, man. Because a lot of times. You know, we see guys living the bachelor life and is always on the go, living this baller life and do all that. And that's cool. I do that sometimes. You know, I'm on the go sometime. I'm you know, I, I live a I live a pretty I live a pretty fly life sometime, but most times I'm at the crib chilling. I'm at the crib chilling, sipping on some tea, reading a good book, maybe working on some content. You know, maybe figuring out the settings on my camera, trying to become a better camera user, trying to, you know, researching some uh, some content creation techniques, trying to be a better content creator. No, I, I'm, I spend my time, most of my time, bettering myself in the things that I do and the ways that I do. You know what I'm saying? I, I come up with a lot of different recipes and different, you know, herbs and different things that may taste together in certain dishes. You know, this is what I do. So, you know, I I, I need to, I, I really need to show y'all just, just everyday life, man. But anyway, let's get back into it, man, because I get sidetracked like a fool. All right, man, number six benefit. Not giving your strength and peace away through the process of giving your testosterone and giving your strength over to a woman all the time. If you're a married man, you give a bunch of your strength to your wife. She gets a bunch of your strength. If you have daughters, you give a bunch of your strength to your daughters. You dumb down your testosterone. You dumb down your masculine energy for your wife and your daughters. You do that. You have to sometimes. And think about the amount of test testosterone you lose simply by making love to your wife. By being intimate with your wife, man, you use a lot of testosterone. You don't know, and, and, and you lose more testosterone with her because you lose it physically and you lose it emotionally. There's a complete drainage of your energy when you're being intimate with your wife. I'm talking if you have a loving wife. Hopefully, if you got a wife, she is a loving wife. If you ain't if she ain't loving, then what you doing? What are you doing? And so that's one of the major benefits. You don't give your strength away. You know, you get to continually build your strength. That's why those guys can get so ripped and lean just off doing push-ups. And guys do calisthenics, man, to get lean quick. You know what I'm saying? And it'd be a different kind of leanness, man. That's why I tell you guys, man, like eating, when you think about the routine of their diet, you know, you, they, they, we'll, we'll get into that, though. But um, you got you to gotta kind of restrict your diet. Like you don't have access to certain things. Yeah, you can pull up at McDonald's, but bro, I don't have access to McDonald's. When I look at McDonald's, I don't see anywhere to get food. Like I don't look at McDonald's as somewhere for me to get food. I don't look at fast food restaurants as somewhere for me to get food. I don't want my food fast. If my food is fast, it better be some fruit that I can just wash off and eat. Otherwise, I don't want no fast food. I don't want to be able to pull up somewhere and you could give me my food in three minutes. I don't want no food that cooks in three minutes. I ain't got nothing in here that cooks in three minutes, bro. Nothing. And you're going to give me a whole meal in three minutes and then give me a big a cup of sugar with it? I don't look at that as food. Those guys don't either. They don't have access to it. Now, you may say, man, but those guys, man, they get their stuff in commissary, man, they have all those honey buns and all that. Man, let me tell you something, man. Those guys have figured out ways to get the proper amount of post-workout carbs and protein from the craziest ways, man. Craziest ways. I had a partner, man. He came home swole. I said, man, what you eating in there? He said, man, every day he ate two honey buns with peanut butter cookies. I was like, man, how you got swole with that? He said, every day after working out, I'll take a honey bun, get a cup with some water, crush up some peanut butter cookies in it. When you crush up the peanut butter cookies, they turn to a peanut butter paste like peanut butter. Spread them on the honey bun and eat them after I work out. So he worked out twice a day. That's all he ate. And I said, man, that's all you ate? He said, yeah, man, that, you know how many calories that is? He said, the honey bun by themselves, they 400 calories a piece. That's 800 calories. He said, then you take cookies. You take about four cookies in each one. No, no, no. You know what? He said the honey bun was 600 calories. The honey bun was 600 calories a piece, so that's 1,200 calories. You take four cookies and put them in each one of them. Each time you get those, you get another 300 calories from those. So when you really look at it, it's a lot of calories. I mean, 1,800 calories. I ain't got to eat all day. If you get 1,800 calories, you ain't hungry. I said, man, you know what, boy? You make a lot of sense. You make a lot of sense, boy. You make a lot of sense. 1,800 calories is 1,800 calories, no matter how you spend it. Now, if you need a belly full of food, 
then you probably need to be in use of lettuces and things like that that's going to last you throughout the day. But 1,800 calories is 1,800 calories. And I promise you, if you're hitting that eye like you're supposed to, man, listen, calories in, calories out is just how it is. You got to think about it. All, all you're drinking in there is water. You drink water every day. That's pretty much all you, all, all you know for sure you got access to is water. Famo, salute. So, another thing, man, number seven benefit is you get adequate rest because it's lights out at a certain time every night. I don't care how long you want to stay up. It ain't no stand up watching TV till midnight. It ain't no Netflix and chilling till midnight knowing you got to get up in the morning. It ain't no hanging out in the streets all night knowing you got to be to work at seven. There's none of that. You are going to be in that cell at 10 p.m. Because the door's going to lock. That's where you're going to be. And guess what? Not only are the doors going to lock, but the lights going to turn off. It's lights out, baby. Same way when you same way you in basic training in the military. Basic training is just a free world prison. You have a structured routine. You eat at the same time every day. You eat at the same time every day. Breakfast is coming through that cell block at the same time every day. Lunch is coming through that cell block at the same time every day. Dinner is coming through that cell block at the same time every day. Rain, sleet, snow, I don't care what prison you go. That breakfast, lunch, and dinner is coming through that cell block at the same time every day. Routine. Routine makes you not have to focus on silly things. You understand? Let me tell you something, bro. I can tell you what I'm going to eat for breakfast on July 1st. I can tell you exactly what I'm going to eat for breakfast. As long as it, it depends. If July 1st on a Saturday, then I'm going to eat some fruit. Any other day that's not a Saturday, I can tell you exactly what I'm going to eat for breakfast. I can tell you exactly what my last meal is going to be. It's going to be the same thing every day. My middle meal, the, the meal that I'm, the meal that, that, you know, the meals that I'm recording uh, to put up on Patreon, those are my lunch meals. My lunch meals are going to vary because that's where I get my variation, my variety from. First thing in the morning, it's going to be the same thing. And last meal of the day, it's going to be the same thing every single day i'm talking about every single day you take the saturdays out every single day so that's maybe 304 days now th now 300 and 312 that 314 days how many days in your 365 okay so they make 52 saturdays maybe 53 saturdays i don't know it depends on how you count maybe more saturdays than that i would have to look at the calendar but you know, 312, 313, 300, some, somewhere around there. But that's what I'm talking about, man. You got to be in a routine of things so you don't blow your mind worrying about silly things. You understand? Man, I don't worry about what I'm going to wear. Why I wear these dashikis all the time? Because I ain't got time to be worrying about what I'm going to put on. And besides, they dope. It represents me and my heritage. You know what I'm saying? It represents me and my West Indian heritage. It represents, it represents everything I needed to represent. But I wear them because they're simple. I... It don't matter which one I'm aware. I just I just pull one out the closet. I pull one out the closet. It don't, I don't know what turban I'm aware. I pull one out the closet. That's just what I do. You got to have a routine. Those guys don't have to worry about what clothes they're going to wear. They don't stress about foolishness so they can focus on life. They can focus on bettering themselves. They can focus on reading. They can focus on working out. They can focus on meditation. They can focus on all of the things you need to focus on to be healthy. Number eight benefit. Working out is a necessity if you want to be in the best position to handle whatever comes your way, but especially in prison. Being in shape, being fit, being strong is a great tool to have when you're in an environment that's filled with aggression like that. But we live in the same aggressive environment out here. Somebody might roll up on you, man, and try to jack you at any time. Hopefully they don't. But if they do, do you want to be the type of man that feel like you can knock somebody out? Or you want to be the type of man that trying to see if you can pick some up to defend or what you want to be? You want to be the type of man that's on go or you want to be the type of man that's on slow? I want you men to understand something. And I had a partner that told me this one time. Man. I'm a partner, big dog, man. Uh, we, we were, uh, I had fell through, man. And uh, I don't know if I hollered him in the projects or up in the, up in the country. Uh, I think I was up in the country. And uh, so he, he was breeding pit bulls up there. And I had a partner live right across the street from him. So 
we up there, man, and uh, he like, man, uh, he was like, man, she, man, y'all come up here and work out with me sometime, man. So he had the he had the three hundred pound Olympic set up there. He was like, man, come on up here and work out with me, man. Uh, and uh, so you know, we were chopping it up, man. He said, man, uh, I said, yeah, man. I said, shit, man, you know, I might do that, man. You know, I, you know, we got to stay on top of the thing, man. He said, yeah, cause you don't never know when one of these little young dudes gonna try you. And that stuck with me forever. You never know. You never know when somebody gonna get ballsy and try to try you. You never know, but you got to be ready. You understand? You got to be ready, especially as you get into your late 30s, 40s, 50s. Dog, you got to be ready. You got to be ready. You can't be around here, man, living with these type of aches and pains where it, it, it hurts you to even walk. You know you ain't going you know to be able to thump if it hurts you to walk. You put that leg down wrong, man, you're going to tumble. Like, you got to stay, stay on go. And in that environment, you stay on go always on go why now not everybody some people they just ain't gonna be on go but for the most part you're in an environment that embodies the need to stay on go to be ready because a lot of times man if you look threatening enough somebody who might try somebody ain't gonna pick you the one thing you don't want to do is look like an easy mark you don't want to look like the guy that i should try you want, to be, you want me to be thinking about, you want me to have to brainstorm a plan if I'm going to try. You, you, don't want, you don't want to look like the guy you want to run up on. And you also don't want to be the guy who's afraid if you didn't bring your iron with you. You understand? You don't want to be the guy that's afraid because you ain't got your iron with you. And so even if they ain't got no weapon, you're still afraid because you know you ain't been working on yourself. You don't, you don't know how strong you are. You know how weak you feel. So even if you ain't going to do that, man, listen, you ain't got to go to the gym. Get up every day. Do 100 push-ups in the morning. Do 100 push-ups at night. You ain't got to do 100 straight, not starting off. Do 10 sets of 10 if you got to. Do 20 sets of 5 if you got to. Just don't take a long break between. Don't rest any more than a minute between your sets. And you just, you, 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 count, you count your reps. If you get down to at the end, you can't do number 2. If you got to do 98 and then do 2 in the last set, it don't matter. Do 100 in the morning. Do 100 at night. If you ain't worked out in forever, do 50 in the morning. Do 50 at night. Do that for a couple of weeks. When that get a little easier for you, do 75 in the morning. Do 75 at night. The goal is to get you where you're doing 125 in the morning, 125 at night. You're doing 250 push-ups every single day. Every single day. And I'm going to tell you, that is one heck of a workout. Get you a bar or get you a, 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 a dip tower, a pull-up tower, and just do some pull-ups and dip. Do pull-ups, dips, and push-ups. Man, you ain't got to go to the gym, but you want to be you wanna be grinding every day. You want to be building strength. You want to be building tenacity. You want to be building, you know, functional, uh, functional fitness and functional strength every single day, man. You want to be doing that. You want to be doing that. So if you're doing if you're doing 250 push-ups a day, in 30 days you did 7,500 push-ups. You do 7,500 push-ups a month. You're doing 90,000 push-ups a year. Do 90,000 push-ups a year and see and see how much and see what kind of shape you be in. And then if you if you can do more, you do more. You get up to where you're doing 250 in the morning, 250 at night, 500 in the morning, 500 at night. But the goal is to get to where you're doing 125 in the morning, 125 at night. It's not hard. You at home. You can do it. How are you going to be at home and then go to work and then go somewhere else and then come home and then go to bed and you ain't worked out all day? You mean tell me you ain't worked out, you ain't did 20 push-ups all day? What you doing with yourself? What are you doing with yourself? What are you doing to yourself? If that's how you live, I bet you're not eating right either. Get yourself together, man. The number nine benefit of a prison mindset is that you have a restricted diet with zero access to fast food. You have zero access to fast food. You have zero access to soul food. You have zero access to a whole lot of candy and soda and all that. Yes, you could get commissary, but the commissary don't come all the time. And most times commissary is a business thing. 
You understand? Business is transactional. It's they're, they're on the barter. You're on the barter system there. And man, listen, bro, you have to take advantage of the mindset. You mean, don't tell me you got to go to prison to embrace this mindset. Bring it into your life. Don't do it, bro. You don't have access to that fast food, man. Spiritual OG. Appreciate the Tim Bone, man. Just took the vow a couple of months ago. Applied the mindset back to my studies and workout. 1K push up, 1K squat, 1K sit up and cardio one day. 500 dip, 500 push ups, one oblique crunk and cardio the next day. Man, get it, bro. Get it. Get to it, man. Because here's the thing, man. Somebody may say, man, that'll take a long time. Well, what else you doing? You know how many people sit in front of their TV, man, for three hours and watch a movie? What, two hours? Uh, however long a movie, an hour and a half, two hours, you know, have, uh, two hours. You sit in front of your TV for two hours, man, but you don't want to work out, man, for an hour, hour and a half. Do what you got to do, man. Spiritual OG, man, again, brother, appreciate you, man. Thanks, brother, for being a great mentor for the last couple of years. All praise to the most high. Been sharing both channels to all the like-minded brothers I know in Miami. One love, bro. One love. Spiritual, man. Salute to you, man. Next time I'm down in the uh, in the, in, the, in the MIA, man, we're going to have to, uh, we had to link up, man. We'll link up, man. And uh, I, know, uh, I know a dope little vegan spot down there, man, or, or a dope little, a dope little plant-based spot where not, you know, not everything is, uh, they do have some, uh, some other varieties on the menu if that's what you want, but it's pretty clean, a kosher spot, man. Uh, but the majority of the menu is plant-based. I think they do. I, I think they have a couple of a uh, couple of chicken dishes, man. I don't know. Then the chicken might not even be real. <laughs> I don't know. But they got a couple of dishes down there, man. But for me, the whole you know, I mean, the vegan thing is cool, man. But don't be honest with you, man. Straight veganism, straight veganism, just straight veganism. It's a woman's diet. It's um, you know, it's it's a pretty estrogenic diet. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what that's what it's gonna be. So. So, you know, I do the 80 20 do the running me diet. Cause can't nobody tell me, man, that, you know, the do the running me diet ain't cold. You just got to know how to get your 20% of, uh, of animals from a, from a source where they raised like the most I say they should be raised. That's all. So, again, man, they restrict the diet with zero access to fast food, man. Zero access to fast food, zero access to soul food, zero access to eating. Man, listen, bro, you can't be zero access to, you know, Eating Thanksgiving dinner the next day after Thanksgiving. Let me tell you something, bro. I don't want Thanksgiving. If I eat Thanksgiving dinner, bro, I don't want Thanksgiving dinner on Friday. Thanksgiving was Thursday. You dig? I don't want Sunday dinner on Monday. I want Sunday dinner on Sunday. I'm going to eat Sunday dinner. If I don't have it Sunday, I got to wait till the next Sunday. I don't want no leftovers. Monday, I got to get back to my thing, man. You know, Monday, I got to get back to my thing, brothers. You understand what I'm saying? I got to get back to my thing, man. The number 10 benefit of a prison mindset. Semen retention. And or no fab. Now, I know some guys do, but I also know a lot of guys who don't. I know, I've, I've no, man, listen, man, I ain't told y'all where I'm from, man. You know, I'm just trying to call King Ray Ray. That's from Pookie and Ray Ray. So, man, listen, I've known some guys who never did. I've known some guys who, 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 who say they did. But the guys who didn't, then the mental clarity they had when they came out, man, man, it was so raw when they came out, bro. I'm talking about mentally, man, them guys were raw when they came out. They were just on another level when they came out, man. You know what I'm saying? I had a partner man named, uh, I had a partner Charles, man. He came out, bro, and, uh, man, he said, man, for the first week he was home, man, he ain't even, he, he wasn't even intimate with his wife. He was like, I ain't finna come right down here and act like I'm no, act like I'm no freak like that. I've been gone five years. I'm chilling. I'm good. I'm good. We'll ease into it. He say, he, he say, you know, he, he didn't put it to the side. He say, man, he romanced a whole lot. He say, he just kept a hot and bother for a whole week. Say, by the time they did get together, man, she was, it was like he ain't never went nowhere. She fell right back in line. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I tell you guys, man, a lot of the things I talk about, man, I'm not, I'm not just telling you things that work for me. I'm telling you things that'll work for other guys as well. So that's, that's one of the big ones right there. Cause you don't have no access to, um, uh, 
you don't have no access to to you know the wrong type of the wrong type of images. You know what I'm saying? You don't have you can't be on your phone, you know, watching um, you know, these these different type of sites and all of that, man. You can't be on your phone watching that. It, it, it's not that type of environment. There's always somebody watching. There's always somebody counting. There's always somebody coming and checking things out. There's always somebody patrolling. So always somebody roaming around. So you just can't be out there like that. So the bottom line is I want you to understand that, that you must understand that that's an environment where it's conducive to that. Because honestly, a lot of times, man, you may, hell, you may be in a cell with somebody, man, who ain't with that dog. You can't do that in here. You might have to fight yourself, mate, bro. And I'm going to be honest with you. If you the type that want to do that and he ain't, he probably going to whoop you. Because undoubtedly he's, he's, he's mentally and spiritually stronger than you are and probably physically stronger than you too. If all you want to sit around and do, man, is lose testosterone to yourself. The number 11 benefit. Being in an environment where self-respect carries the true weight it deserves to carry. Respecting yourself doesn't carry a lot of weight out here because not respecting yourself, disrespecting yourself, treating yourself poorly, doing damage to yourself intentionally is so widespread an activity out here that self-respect is overlooked except by the few who also respect themselves. You dig? In that environment, self-respect carries so much weight where people respect you for carrying yourself with self-respect, with dignity, with honor. Somebody may jump to your defense just because they respect you as a self-respecting, honorable man. Not the same out here. So we have to do that for ourselves. We have to motivate ourselves. We have to champion ourselves. We have to protect ourselves. We have to motivate ourselves. We have to respect ourselves for respecting ourselves. And only surround ourselves with a few people who understand what that respect come from, what that respect means. And that's one of the major things, man, being in that environment where self-respect carries the true weight it deserves to carry. Self-respect is, hey man, it's one of the weightiest accomplishments that a man can have. Because self-respect means there are certain activities, certain things, certain people, certain ways of living, certain environments that you avoid at all cost. At all cost. The number 12 benefit of the prison environment for us men in the free world is being out of the rat race and keeping up with the Joneses. You out of the rat race. You ain't in a rat race. You ain't worrying about what car somebody driving because you ain't, you ain't driving nowhere. You ain't worrying about what kind of clothes somebody wearing because you got to wear the same clothes every day. You got to be in that jumpsuit or you got to be in, you got to be in them stripes. Your number is on your clothes, bruh. This is what you must understand. We all gonna wear the same thing. So you ain't got on no Gucci shoes. You ain't got on no Gucci jacket. You ain't got on no Louis Vuitton. You ain't got on no red bottom. You listen, if you hood, man, look, you ain't got on no um Ah man, I can't even think of that. You ain't got no true religion. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You ain't got no rock, you, you ain't got no rock revival. You don't have on none of that. If you're a cowboy, you ain't got no Ariat jeans in there. You don't have no Ariat shirt. You ain't got no cowboy boots. You got on that prison uniform. That's what you're wearing every day. If you go to church on Sunday in prison, you're wearing that prison uniform. Same thing you wear to lunch on Monday. That's, that's what you're doing. This is what you're doing, man. And I want you men to understand that this is the way it has to be. This is the way it has to be. You have to embrace these mindsets. I'm out of the rat race. I don't keep up with the Joneses. I don't care what the Joneses got. I don't even know the Joneses. The Joneses look like aliens to me. I don't watch aliens and I don't, I don't hang out with them. And I don't try to keep up with them either. The number 13 and final benefit of embracing the prison mindset in the free world is gun violence and the threat thereof are eliminated for both sides. So the older dodge of bringing a knife to a gunfight doesn't matter. 
Even if a man has a blade, it's still hand-to-hand combat. It's, you have a better chance of defending yourself and defeating a man if he has a knife than you do if a man has a firearm and he can do harm to you from a distance. The man has to get close enough to you. And if you equip yourself and prepare yourself with the proper agility and mobility and arm yourself with the knowledge of self-defense, there's a possibility that you can stay out of harm's way and defeat a man in that environment. But if guys are running by, driving by in cars, unloading, there's nothing you can do. Nothing you can do. So it makes a man have to guard himself and make sure that he is saying what he wants to say and that he's just not intentionally being offensive and intentionally creating drama and beef. Because many men understand hand-to-hand combat is a different thing than all this shoot them up pow pow boy is a different thing hand to hand boy so listen brothers i appreciate y'all coming through man i appreciate y'all coming through i really do ah uh, let's do a quick recap spiritual benefits of separating yourself like a prisoner number one high levels of testosterone unmatched in the human world you're around a bunch of men Testosterone everywhere. Probably going to be some drama. Probably going to be a little violence. But that's the environment. Which means that you got to do everything in your power to keep your your testosterone enhanced. Number two. No stresses and drama from worrying about the everyday issues of the free world. You don't have to worry about it. You ain't worrying about it. You ain't worrying about your rent. You you, You just don't have to worry about it. You're not worrying about need more. You're not worrying about getting more money and trying to stack up paper and how much money you got in the bank and how much you got investments. You ain't worrying about that, especially if you got a lot of time. You ain't worrying about that. You can't worry about it. You got to worry about what's going on in now. Number three, no feminine energy and the issues it causes between men, nor the nagging and complaining that's readily available in the free world. You don't have to worry about that. You understand? Because here's the thing. Even if you and that man, you're dealing with a CEO, that CEO going to deal with who she going to deal with. It ain't going to be no competition. Because the guys know if a CEO don't come on to you, you come on to her, boy, you finna get thrown in a hole or something. The beat down boy might come in there and jump on you. You know what I'm saying? They might, they might bring the K9 crew in there full gear, full ride gear, and whoop on that head. So you already know, man, you can't be coming to throw chick. If, if she wants you, then you got yourself some. But you ain't got to worry about nobody trying to get into it or have no, no fisticuffs over it because the woman going to choose who she wants. She's in a position of power. She's in a position of choosing when it comes to that. Number four. A set routine that eliminates the need to stress about the nuances of an ever-changing landscape in the free world. And also, not having to waste your time worrying about simple things that are already taken care of. You ain't got to worry about what time you're going to sleep, they're going to tell you. You ain't got to worry about what time you're getting up, they're going to tell you. You ain't got to worry about what time you're eating, they're going to tell you. You ain't got to worry about what time you're not eating, they're going to tell you. Or you ain't got to worry about it. For the most part, in some, in some places, you ain't got to worry about when you're going to shower, they're going to tell you. Number five, none of that social media nonsense, self-explanatory. Number six, not giving your strength and peace away through the process of dumping your testosterone into random women. Not going to happen. Number seven, adequate rest because lights out at the same time every night. Lights on at the same time every morning. Number eight, working out is a necessity if you want to be in the best position to handle whatever comes your way. You got to get in shape. If nothing else forces you to get in shape, that environment will. But why do we need that environment? We live in that environment every day, and it comes from all different ways, and it comes from all different places. We don't know where it's going to happen there. So you need to be getting in shape because it's even worse in this environment. Number nine, restricted restricted diet with zero access to fast food. You ain't got to worry about eating no poison food. Not like that. None of those things that are that are concocted and, and certain ingredients are added to make you blow up, to make you addicted to the food. You don't have to worry about that. Number 10. Semen retention and or no fat, no access to watching none of that foul content. Number 11, being in an environment where self-respect carries the true weight it deserves to carry. It's supposed to be carry heavy weight. You're supposed to be, you know, a don of the environment if you respect yourself a certain way. Number 12, 
being out of the rat race and keeping up with the Joneses. You ain't worrying about keeping up with the Joneses. What somebody else had, don't bother you. You ain't worrying about what somebody posting on social media. You ain't worrying about what somebody, somehow somebody just bought. You ain't worrying about what job they just got. You ain't worrying about nobody bragging about their investments or none of that. You got a life to live in there. And number 13, firearm violence and the threat thereof are eliminated on both sides. So nobody's going to pull out. Oh, nobody's going to pull out a firearm. You understand? So ain't nobody going to bring a knife to the gunfight. Everybody going to bring a knife to the knife fight. Just that simple. So listen, brother, we're going to slide on out of here, man. Phenomenal show. I appreciate y'all being in the joint, man. Uh, we're going to get ready to get on out of here. Appreciate it, man. Uh, Spiritual Alpha, man. I appreciate the multiple donations, man. I appreciate it. Uh, Uncommon, man. Appreciate you coming. Appreciate you joining the family, man. Appreciate it. BOA fan, girl. Appreciate it. Appreciate you supporting the show. Again, my brother Spiritual, I appreciate you joining the GLG, man. I appreciate you, you know, with the uh, donations as well. Let's get ready to head out of here, man. You know, we'll 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 be back in King Ray, man, man. We'll be back, man. We'll make another appearance tomorrow, but today, right now, hey brothers, we got to go. Peace.